Favorite song to play live? Sonny, what's your favorite song to play live? I don't know, it's just so many of them. There's the Larry Graham stuff I love to play, there's the Prince stuff I love to play. They're talking about our like... band, man, what about... about... Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a... Uh, eh. <laughs> Cut! Man, I love playing Dean Town, I love that song, because it pushes me to actually play a lot more physical, because this is, you're hitting 16 notes, and Pitar is hitting it at 100 miles an hour, so for me, that's my favorite song. Pitar, what's your favorite to play? Actually, the last time he played Home, yeah. it was pretty sick. Oh, yeah. I like Home. Sick. I'm not gonna lie, that's my favorite song to play live. That's my favorite song in the entire Corey Wong catalog, which is kind of an anomaly of a song within my catalog, because it, it has a different overall feel than most of my other material, but for whatever reason, that one is my favorite to play, and it's my favorite song in the catalog. Also, Ketosis. They've been playing oh, yeah, that one yeah. goes hard. Let's start right at the trombone solo. We're gonna see who in the horn section has their parts memorized now that there's no iPads. Here we go, let's... <laughs> memorized and transposed. Right. <laughs> you play... playing on soprano. Ketosis? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. dude, that's right. That's right. Well... That's right. the best mustache in the band? Barbash. 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 And, he did, and he did that wow. yesterday at the concert. You guys, and, and yeah, he walks up, and, he walks and he's like, up, and he walks up in the middle of the gig goes. Sonny's got a tight thing happening right there. Is that the mustache song? What was that? <laughs> when are you coming to Japan? I'm trying to get to Japan ASAP. I'm talking, you take the sap straight off the tree. That's how ASAPing, I'm trying, I got a bucket full of maple syrup. I'm trying to ASAP my way to Tokyo. There is a direct flight from MSP to Tokyo. I'm trying to get on that flight as soon as possible. Utah's your local promoter. Tell him to hit up my agent, Ethan Berlin. Let's go. Let's do it. Most of your material is in 4-4. Do you play anything in odd time signatures? Yeah, we, yeah, we got odd time, we got odd time. <laughs> Was a tune called Until It Falls that we used to play. And fall it did. <laughs> Bunch of college kids trying real hard, you know? It's fun to play. Is it enjoyable for the listener? Does the general public want to hear it? Maybe not, but I think if we play it that short at a concert, it might have its place. But if you put I that 12-8 on it. Yeah. We could put the 12-8 on we it. Could dance yeah, to okay, the good. Now the tune is in 5 8 7 8, 5 8 7 8, and then one bar of 6 8. Now if you do the math, that actually ends up as two bars of 6 4 and then one bar of 6 8. So if you actually ended up playing it a little more like a 6 4 or a 12 8, it might feel like a 4 4 9 of 5 with a bar of 6 8. And we could maybe potentially do it and we could get on the radio. Probably not gonna happen. That was the music school kid in me thinking, let's get cute. I am also from Brazil. How can I make my way into the United States? We got the green card corner over here in the band. <laughs> I came to US because I got into college, so I came with a student visa. Then, you know, you, had, you get the OPT. Optional practice training. That is for a year that you have to pretend you have a job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like every musician finishes college with a bunch of gigs, no. And then like after you apply for an artist visa, and eventually if you like do a lot of like cool stuff, you can like possibly get a green card. 
It's not always that way, but you can renew your artist uh -huh. visa like two or three times, yes. and then you can get the green card. But there are other ways you can come here too. Even if you buy a ticket to spend like three months, like in the summer here, so you can do networking, you can meet people, you can meet musicians, see That's how the jam visa. sessions. Yes. It's a tourist visa, so you can meet people and eventually like people can start calling you to come play here. Or you can try to go to college, which is very expensive. Do a six month thing, try to get a full ride. I got a full ride. There are schools that they tour around the world trying to get people to come here too. So like there are ways to be here. Or do your own project and tour. You don't need to be in the United States to be successful. You just need to be doing what you love to do to be playing everywhere. That should be your goal, not be specifically here. A lot of people have asked me, well, I live in this small town. How am I supposed to get famous if I don't live in New York or Nashville or London or L.A.? That's so yesterday. That's right, Sonny. <laughs> That's very yesterday. We're in yeah. the age of the Internet. That's right. Does Sammy G have a pedal board? No. <laughs> I just don't have it on this game. Jay Webb's got a pedal board. Jay Webb somehow, he's got a special concoction that works. My pedal board is all jacked up for flying around the world and... Also, Corey, I think the person asked that question because every Barry solo I have has your plug-in on it. Oh, that's so. right. If you're trying to get that dope Barry sax solo sound <laughs> that Sam has on the albums, it's the Archetype Corey Wong plug-in by Neural DSP. The Archetype Corey Wong plug-in oh. gives you <laughs> da, da, da. See, I tried to pitch this to Universal Audio when they were putting out Luna. I, I'm always thinking of marketing ideas. They were getting into the DAW game. And I was trying to get them to do the DAW, DAW, DAW song in their ads. Remember that from the Volkswagen commercials back in the day? I'm just letting you know I'm not making a DAW anytime soon, so I want somebody to use that. It's great. It's, it's a catchy tune, and it's what you make. So... <laughs>